This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Morning, Rabbi. So we're learning Sefer Nechemia, Parak Vav. Parak Vav. Um, in Parak Dalit, it, it spoke about um, Nechemia's op- opposition, the uh, instigators, people who started up with him. And Parak Dalit discussed how they tried to interfere with the construction of the wall of Yushalayim. Parak Vav is going to discuss how his uh, opponents are going to start up with him personally. So uh, we're really going back in Parak, uh, in the previous Parak, we, we sort of mentioned that the wall was complete, but now we're sort of uh, going back in time, and we're going to speak about those who oppose Nehemiah and their plan to try to hurt Nehemiah personally. So Parak Vav, Pasuk Ha'afayhi, Chasher Nishma L'san Valat V'toyviya U'legeshem Ha'arvi And it was, when it was heard, to Sanvalat, Toyviya, and Geshem the Arab, Uliyasar al Yavenu, and the rest of our enemies, when they heard Kivanisia Sachaima, that I built the wall, Vlainoisar Baparat, and there were no more breaches in the wall, Gam Adhoesahi, and also until that time, Dulasois Lahemadativa Sharim. I did not set up any gates, any doors in the gates. Okay? So for the the Pasik is telling us two points. Number one, that the opposers of Nehemiah heard that the wall was complete without any breaches. And, by the way, there are no doors in the gates. <clears throat> now, why is it mentioning there are no doors in the gates? Why? That seems like a parenthetical point. What does it have to do with anything? So, the Mitzudah David says that they also heard uh, that there were no doors. Why is the Navi telling me this? This will... This is given as an introduction to explain what's about to come. And that is, they had a plan that a guy by the name of Shmaya is going to hide himself in the Heichal um, because he was afraid that if he would harm Nehemiah publicly, people would see. So he figured the only place to hide himself would be in the Heichal. So why is it saying this? They heard that there were no doors, and now they could come into the city. In other words... How are they getting into the city if there's no doors and no breaches? How do they get the complete? In other words, they, they, they were only able to come up with this plan because the city walls were unprotected. Had the city walls been protected, they never would have chalumped to... to go into the city, they wouldn't have been able to go into the city. In other words, the, the, the parak is introducing how are they able to, uh, to even have a, a Havamina to come up with this plan. It was only because they realized they, they would be able to go into the city unhindered, un, un, uh, right? They had the doors. It looks like even in those days they, they declared Jerusalem an open city. Yeah, <laughs> well then, then it was, right? <laughs> right. Now the Malvin points out. The, the Malvin points out that the reason why the Navi is telling us that the doors were not put in the gates was their plan was to halt the construction and to really put a stumbling block in the advancement of the city of Shalim. They only had the the boldness to do such a thing because the project had not been completed yet. Had the doors been in the gates, and it would have been. Uh, Fait accompli, so then, then they, they never would have had um, the audacity. They, they wouldn't have had the courage, or they, they would have felt it would have been pointless because the, the task had already been completed. Okay. Pasuk base. Vayishlach Sanvalat. The Geshem Eli Lemar. Sanvalat and Geshem sent me a message saying, this is Nehemia speaking in the first person. They said, Lecha, come, Veniva Ado Yachtov, we will meet together. Ba'kafirim. Rashi says Kafirim is the name of a place. The Malbim says... Just like a village or a small town? Oh, some of our Shem learn like Kfar, right? Mm-hmm. Like the lesson of uh, Kfar. I think the Rabag learns that way. Be'echad um, Kfirim. However, the Malbim and Rashi learns it's the name of a place. And, specifically... It's in the Chelek of Benyamin. In Sefer Yeshua Parak Yudches, we find their uh, 
a city by the name of Kefira. So they said, let's meet in Kefira, in the plain of Oinai. But says Nehemia, I know what they're up to. They thought to harm me. They thought to harm me. Their plan was to harm me. What did they say? I sent them messengers saying, no, 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 I don't have time to meet with you. I'm busy with a project. I have a very important project. I'm doing a very important work. I can't go down. Why halt the malacha kasher arpe if I were to leave it? Be a radati alechem and go down to you. In other words, I don't have time right now. Try me in a year. But right now I'm involved in a very important project. I'm involved in building the city of Yushalayim. And therefore there's no time to do this. Says Nehemiah, they sent me this message Arba Pa'amim four times, figuring that maybe they would wear me down and I would agree to meet with them. And I kept on responding. I didn't rest on my laurels, I didn't give in, I didn't weaken, I realized they wanted to harm me, and I pushed them off every time. Yeah, I wonder why I didn't respond by saying, listen, I'm very busy, I don't have the time to come and see you. If you want to talk about something important, make an appointment, come and see me. On my, on my turf. Okay, he was, a, he, he knew what they were up to. Yeah, but on his turf, he would be protected. It's be- better to avoid the enemy entirely, right? No, you could, you could have them arrested, you know? Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, so now Samvalet sends this message a fifth time. Esnaroi with his assistant, with an open letter in his hand. What does that mean, with an open letter in his hand? Meaning, aside from the fact that the, this assistant came and mm, delivered an oral message, the Malvin says, um, Right? The Malbim says, V'kadavar hazeh, Shegam biyad naroi shalach bal peh. Through the servants he sent orally, Sheyizvadu b'kfirim. That they should meet in kfirim. And, in addition, the lad had an open letter. Why, why did he have to tell him orally and give a letter? To show the importance of it. To show the imperative of it. And to show that, look, we're not trying to, ha- to harm you. If we were trying to harm you, the letter would have been sealed. We wouldn't want other people to know about it. The fact that we're being so open about it means we have nothing to hide. So we presume from this that the other four times it was just a verbal communication? Right. Okay. Vayishlach Eli Sanvalet. Okay, okay. Kosovba. What did it say in the letter? Bagoyim among the nations, Nishma, it was heard. The Gashmu Oimer. And Gashmu tells us. Now, who's Gashmu? He's the Arab, no? Geshem. Good. Arab. He is the Arab, Geshem Harvi. Right in Pasigal. So, why is he called Gashmu here? So, the Ibn Ezra says that. Um, the Vav is sometimes added in Hebrew like Yeser and Yisroi. That's right? so Ibn Ezra learns it wasn't a different name. Just in Hebrew, the way the, the word could sometimes manifest is with an extra Vav. And so it, it, it was written in the letter. Among the nations it was heard. And Gashmu tells us, <laughs> This is the message that Nehemiah got. That among the Goyim it, it's heard. And Gashmu confirms this. That you and the Jews are planning to rebel. Therefore you build the wall. And you will be the king for them. Like these words. Now Rashi learns that the words are going back in the beginning of the Pasuk. In other words, the letter said, it says in the letter, like these words, what are the words? That Bagoyim Nishma, that it was heard among the Goyim. In other words, Nehemiah is getting a message that, you know, the word is out, Nehemiah, that this city that you're rebuilding, you're not trying to uh, improve the social welfare of the people, but rather, you're planning rebellion, and you are going to be the king. 
Look at Rashi. Kasev Baba Isa Igaris was written in that letter by Goyim Nishma. Shanoi del Chalo Akam was known to all the Goyim. Shatav Chalo Hudim Chayshim Lemrad. You and all the Jews are trying, planning to rebel. Vegashmu Oimer Gashmu Hu Geshem HaArbi. Gashmu is the same person as Geshem the Arab. Upisroinoi. The interpretation is. Kadam Shomer Lechaveroi Kachu Adar Ploni Oimer. Like when you tell your friend. This is the facts, and even so and so says so. Kadvar Ma'ila Rashi says, Musav al Kasaba. It's going back on the words Kasaba in the beginning of the Pasuk. And it's a Mikra Messiris which should say, Kasaba Kadvar Ma'ila. Seems to me this is like where the human mind is concerned. UN Human Rights Commission got its mandate. Mass about of the Jews, us. About the Jews. Yeah, we're trying to it's rebel. The bottom right. Um, now the Malbim says that when um, Sanvalat wrote that you're going to be the king, these are the words of Sanvalat, and that is that even though this report is baseless, in other words. How do they know you're trying to, bell, to rebel? Only because they see you're building the wall and the doors and you're putting up bars. But there's no indication. They're, they don't have proof that you're trying to rebel, but they're, they're inferring from your dedication to this task that you're trying to rebel. And so says Sambalat, but an additional proof is the fact that you're going to be the king. So says the Malbim, the words Kadvarim Ho'ela, you read like this. This, that it's heard, that you want to be the king, Kadvarim Ho'ela, also proves this type of matter. In other words, Rashi learns Kadvarim Ho'ela are going back in the beginning of the Pasuk. Kosov Ba, it's said in the letter, Kadvarim Ho'ela, like these words, and what are they? The rest of the Pasuk. The Malbim learns no. That Samvalad is saying, even though we didn't have strong indication from the fact that you're building a city that you want to rebel, but nevertheless, that Viata this that it's heard that you want to be the king, Kadvar Ma'ela, that definitely um, is indication that you're trying to rebel. Because what do you mean you want to be the king? Isn't this, this is a, there's a Persian right. mo- monarch. What do you mean you want to be the king? Right. Ah, oh. Pasuk Zayin. And further indication. Now, according to Rashi, this is all part of the letter. V'gam neviyim he'amadata. You have also set up speakers. Now, what do neviyim, we would literally mean prophets. However, um, the word navi could also mean a speaker. The word navi comes from the Pasuk in Yeshaya, Boirei niv sefasayim, the utterance of the lips. So, Sambalat is accusing Nehemiah of appointing speakers to proclaim that Nehemiah will be the next king. V'gam neviyim he'amadata, you have also appointed speakers, likroy alecha, to call out uh, concerning you. That what? B'yushalayim uh, leimer, and Yushalayim saying, Melech b'yudah, there's a new king in Yehuda. V'yata, now, Yisham ala melech advarim ha'elo, if these matters will be heard by the king, you're going to be in big trouble. Right? He doesn't spell out what the consequences are. But if, this, if these matters will be heard by the king, well, you're going to be in trouble. So therefore, the Sanvalat and his cohorts are feigning friendship. And they're saying, you know, let's meet to discuss how we could protect you. And now come. And let's take counsel. Obviously, they want him to come. They'll close the door and they'll slit his throat. And they expect them to show up personally without an entourage. Well, they're sort of feigning friendship. They're trying. They're, they're making it a, a, that they wanted to uh, help him. They they were uh, hoping that Nehemiah would be sort of gullible and fall into their trap and agree to meet with them, and uh, they would harm him. Where, where, where was Sanvalid? Uh, what was his territory? Do we know? We know outside of Yerushalayim, obviously, but I mean, was it outside of Eretz Israel? Was it part of Eretz Israel, but farther away? Apparently, it was near Yerushalayim. We're we are we do not know. We don't know exactly where he was located, but we do have in the beginning of the Chamim Park Beis 
Pasuk Yud, it says, Vayishma Sanvalad HaChairani. Right? So, what does that mean, HaChairani? From Choron, where are they? Right? For not, probably not from Choron, but from Choron. Right? And V'Tavia HaEved HaAmoyni. So these were people that, they've been living in, uh, near Yishalayim for a long time. But Sanvalad is not the first time we're meeting Sanvalad. Sanvalad, he's been a, a well-known troublemaker. So he brings that over here. The Rimitrani says that... But he's not an Arab, right? Because they, they define uh, Geshem as the RV. So he was from Amon or Chor or nobody. He wasn't... Uh, here he brings down in Parak Beis that the Rimitrani says he was a Jewish apostate from the city of Beis Choron. Wertheimer cites Josephus, who asserts that Samval was a Gentile whose daughter had married a Jewish Kohen. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> so, and listen, when the Kohanim who had intermarried expelled their Gentile wives at the end of Sefer Ezra, Samval's son-in-law refused, and he became disqualified from the Kunis of Samval, the Shver, as I talk, I'm you know, I married, wed my daughter to a chash of a, a, a miyuchas. Now he's unemployed. And now, <laughs> now I gotta support him. Now, now I gotta support problem. him, right. <laughs> <laughs> and he brings that Josephus says, I lived to witness the fall of the Persian Empire to the Greeks. And he enlisted the aid of Alexander the Great in setting up a rival temple for his son-in-law on Mount Grisim. So after, look, after this Kohen who became disqualified, he lost his job, so the Shver had to set up a new business for well, him. And he had it in for the Jews, because the Jews caused the son of law to lose the job. Right. So that must have been a pretty powerful guy, if he has an in with Alexander the Great, to give him permission to set up his own temple. Yeah, he is apparently very, uh, a very... An div- influential person. Yeah. Okay, so now, the, the literal, so the way Rashi learns, in, um, again, Parak Vav, Pasuk Zion, that Nehemiah is being accused of appointing speakers, proclaiming him as king. And now if the king hears about that, we, you know, we got to take counsel, what we're going to do. However, not everybody learns that the words Nevi'im are speakers as Rashi learns. In fact, some learn that Nevi'im over here is literal. That the Malvim learns that this refers to a false prophet by the name of Shemaya, who was hired by Sanvalet and Toivia to proclaim... Here, listen, they're very smart, Sanvalet. Sanvalet hired a false Navi to prophesy that Nehemiah is going to be the king, so that Nehemiah, when he gets word from Sanvalet, that the king found out that the Nevi'im are saying he's going to be a king, will go take, take counsel with him. So... The Mabal learns that these Nevi'im are not speakers, they're real Nevi'im. The Gam Nevi'im he amadata, likra yalecha bishalayim lemar. Even prophets um, you established to call out a, 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 about you. And Yushalayim saying, Melch v'yuda. Take a look at the Mabal. The Mabal says, V'gam Nevi'im he amadata. Because we're going to see in Pasuk Yudbeiz that Tovi and Sanvalet hired Shemayo, which was a Navi Sheker, that he should prophesy that, that Nehemiah was going to be a king in Yushalayim. And he actually did prophecy this. Now, what did Nehemiah think when he heard that prophecy? Well, it must have heard a false novel. Well, the Mabim says he thought to himself, maybe it will come true because. The, there were kings under the dominion of Melech Paras. Melech Paras did appoint people to rule over they their local... They were like governors. They wouldn't be a real Melech, right? I mean, uh, Yeah. So, so what... This is what they, they hired Shemaya to prophesy Nehemiah the king, and now they're accusing Nehemiah, oh, look, and you hired the prophets to prophesy you're going to be king. Right? So, oh, very often, the Goyim... What they accuse us of doing yeah, is that right? They do it. Fine. Pasuk Ches says Nehemiah, I'm no fool. I didn't fall for it. I sent to them saying, Lo niya kadvar ma'ela. Asher ata oimer. Nishka shtoivin, nishka hoivin, nishka flagin. Never happened. Ki milibcha ata You made it up. 
You made up the Gansa Maisa. You made up the story that we're rebelling. You made up the story that I have plans on being the king. You made up the story that I hired prophets. You know why you made it up? You're afraid of us. You're afraid of us. All the Goyim, Miyarim. Rashi learns Miyarim is Misyarim. You're afraid. Now, usually you would think Miyarim is causative, not reflexive. But Rashi learns Miyarim, Misyarim. You're afraid. Others learn Miyarim, you're intimidating us. You're causing us to be afraid. That's why you're doing this. If you look in the Ibn Ezra, Ibn Ezra says, Viata Mefachte my son, you're intimidating us. Lamar, your boo you deem and amalacha. You your goal is that we should slacken off. Velay say us and should not be done. Viata banel chazri kis yodai. Strengthen my hands. What does this mean? It says the Malbum. Malbum learns beautifully. Mom says, I know you guys. You have a track record. Your track record is, you've always been afraid of us. You've always been trying to stop us. And now all of a sudden, you're my friend and you're trying to help me. Now you're trying to help me. A leopard doesn't change its spots. I know you. Your past, tra- past performance is indicative of future performance. Future performance, right? Or others learn, Ibn Ezra learns, Forget now, he said. Despite the fact that you've been trying to stop me until now, but now chazik es yadi. Now strengthen me. You've been bad until now. You know I'm almost finished my job. You have an opportunity now to retract your past uh, um, position and strengthen me. So now Nehemi wants to know what's going on. What's what's he talking about that I hired? That I hired. Uh, Prophets to prophecy that I would be the king. So Nehemiah goes into the suspected prophet's home. I came into the house of Shemaiah. Is this a false prophet? Who is a false prophet? Now Rashi learns, Pasuk Yod, that that hu novi shaker. This Shemaiah is a false prophet, and he took a bribe to cause Nehemiah to be afraid. However, the Malbim learns that at this point in time, San, um, Shemayu is not an acclaimed false prophet. That Nehemiah always wanted to investigate this prophecy of Shemaya, who prophesied that he would be the Melech of Yehuda. Now, why didn't Nehemiah call him? Why didn't Nehemiah summon him? Why is Nehemiah going to him? So the pastor continues. I went to Shemaiah ben Deloya ben Mehetav, who Atsur, and he was locked up. In other words, he was sick. And I couldn't call him. So therefore, I went to him. Why does, uh, does this indicate why they give uh, three generations as to just saying ben Deloya? Why also tells us Ben Hitabe? And it's interesting. Well, is Deloya his mother or his father? Pro, um, his Deloya father. sounds to me like Dahlia, but I, you know. Yeah, but then she wouldn't be Ben Muffet. Right. <laughs> so she's got to be right, right. Brother. So it's got to be a male, right? Yeah. And we get to, uh, who cares about the uh, Mehitabe? I don't know. So what did Shemaya say? Vayoymer, nivoid, let's meet. El Beis Ho'alekim, in the house of God. In other words, in the Beis HaMikdash. El Toicha Hechal, in the Hechal. V'nizgara Dalsar Sa'echa. But when we meet, we're going to close the doors. You know why we have to close the doors? Because they're coming to kill you. Kibam L'Hargecha. They're coming to kill who? Shemaya told Nehemiah, they, they, you know that, they, they're coming to kill you. You kill you and Chemia. Chemia. And at night, they're coming to kill you. They're coming to... In other words, 
Why did they have to close the doors of the Heichal? Ah, oh, because the beginning of the parak says that the city gates did not have doors. Then closing them will be problematic. So the rabbi said, this is another reason why the, the parak began that the city gates didn't have doors, to understand how they thought they would be successful in convincing Nehemiah going into these doors. Otherwise, Nehemiah would say, what do you mean they're coming in? Their gates, their doors on the, on the city. So this Shemayim must have been, this Hankel, that's the, that, that's the base of Mikdash. This is the base of Mikdash. So he was a Kohen? Now the question is, are, they, are, they allowed, are you allowed to go into the base of Mikdash? Not if you're... Not if you're not a Kayin. And even if you are a Kayin... Zara, you know where the Bnei Shal is Well, the Heichal... What part of the Beis HaMikdash is the Heichal? The Heichal is the Ulam, the Kaidash, and the Kaidash HaKadoshim. Mm-hmm. Not Koyhanim are now to go there. What's the punishment if you go there? Karev. The Hazar HaKarev. You must. Dei Shemayim. Yisav Dei Shemayim. Yeah, simply put, a Yisav Dei Shemayim, right? Not Misa. However, the Pasuk Vahazar Hakari of Yumas, is that referring to just going in? Hakari is a mashma that gives bring the carbon. No? Or is it only if you're a kari of the carbon, right? Well, well, we'll see Rashi. Now, this will give Nehemiah a clue that this Shmaya is a Navi Shekhar. Because we'll see, is Nehemiah a Kayin? Maybe yeah, maybe no. Nehemiah. Um, for all probably, who is Nehemiah? Ezra. We said he was probably mm-hmm. the same person, right? No, no, no. Ezra was um, maybe Malachi, but Nehemiah may have been Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was from Malchus based David. So, he ain't a Kayin. Yeah. Let's see. Right, the Gemara in Sanhedrin and Daflam and Ches says Nehemiah is Zerubbabel. And he, he was Nizra Bebabel. However, the Rambam and um, the Abarbanel say no, they are not the same person. But in any event, there is certainly an opinion that Nehemiah was Zerubbabel and if that's the case, he's not a coin. But Shemaya was no Kayin. So what does Nehemiah say when Shemaya suggests they go into the Heichal? He says, Va'imra. So I said, Ha'ish Kamani Yivrach, a prestigious man like me, should run away. That's not a... Does a man coward and just flee? Umi Chamani, and who like me, Asher Yava Yala Heichal, can enter the Heichal V'chai and live? Right. I'm not going. Now, let's see Rashi. Betmiya. Im ish. Kamayni yivrach. Likhan zeich. A man like me will flee. Lai avay. Lai echanasham. Ibnei pachad amisa. I'm not going to go there because I'm afraid of death. V'loi ever ala mitzvah shal kalesh baruchu. I cannot violate the command of God. Shalai avay. V'yichna zar beichol. A zar is not allowed to enter. So apparently Rashi learns that by entering he would incur the death penalty of a hazar hakar. If you must. Right, like we mentioned, the Gemara says in Sanhedrin al Ches that who's Nehemia? Zerubbabel. He is not. He's a scion of the house of, uh, of David, a descendant of Yehuda. He's not a king. He can't go in. So he brings down here the Meshachachma in Bamidbar says that this halach of a Hazar HaKar of Yumas is only if you bring a carbon. But if you just go in without bringing a carbon, it's an Avera. But you're not liable to the death penalty. Wait a minute. But that would be going into the, the Azara or the Mishnah. Correct. But the, this uh, interpretation over here, I don't know who it is, um, but it says, Viyasar Alay Likro Bel Kodesh HaKadoshim. Kodesh HaKadoshim, if Azara goes into the Kodesh HaKadoshim, even during the, forget about Yom Kippur, isn't the punishment even greater? Because there's no carbonos in the Kodesh Kadashim. Maybe not. Maybe not. Who, who says who says Kodesh Kadashim? This uh, who does he quote? I'll 
schön hart haben. Ähm, the band came out. I, I don't know who the, uh, the uh, reference is to. Mm -hmm. Okay, we could take a look. Okay, oh no, he brings down over here that therefore the Meshachachma learns Vachai doesn't mean, am I going to live if I go? No, he's, I'm going to die. That's not what it means. Nehemiah was saying, would I go into the Heichal just for the purpose of living? He didn't mean if he goes in, he's going to die. He's, he's saying, am I going to go in to live? Now, he also brings down an opinion here that Nehemiah was a Kayin. The Rimetrani in the Rabag, if you take a look at the Rabag, the Rabag says that there is a death penalty if somebody goes in, Shaloi Latsar Chavoida. Because it says what? No, so the the the, um, the Meshachachma says that's only if you bring a carbon, but to go in as a czar, you're not allowed to go in, but you're not Chayiv Misa. And he says, in other words, why does he have to quote the Pasuk of the Al Yavai B'chalei Salakadesh? Why not the Pasuk B'hazar HaKar of Yumas? Apparently the Rabag learns, like the Rimetrani, that Nechemia was a Kayin. Because later on in Sefer Ezra, in Sefer Nechemia, Nechemia is listed as part of a group that signed a statement of commitment to Hashem. And then at the end of the park it says, these are the Kohanim. So perhaps may, somebody may learn from there that Nechemia, in fact, was a Kayin. So this is the first, the Rabag you just quoted? Is yeah, it? yeah. Does he define the Hechel as Kachei Kedashim? No. Oh, you mean the fact that he invokes the Buzbah Yavah B'chal Yisrael Yeah, in other words... Oh, maybe, maybe, time. yes, right. In other words, if he's but, invoking the Pasuk of Yavah B'chal Yisrael uh, Yeah, but, but, but if, if this is the Kachei Kedoshim, right. it would have to be, you have to say, I can't go in because it's not the right time. If he's a Kohen, right? It's not just a okay, it's true that right. Kippur. But how do you know the punishment is death? Okay, right. That's so. So that's the pasuk he quotes. Now let me ask you a question. Why couldn't Nehemia go into the kodesh of the kodesh Hakadosh? Yeah, it's Asr. but is it one of the three cardinal sins that you have to give up your life for? In other words, let's say a Jew could save his life by going into the kodesh Hakadosh. Are you allowed to go in? Yes. Absolutely, you're mechayiv to go in. If you don't go in, it's navera. If well, some, he was not certain that he was going to get killed. Well, even Suffolk, you're allowed to, you're allowed to, if, if, to save your life, you're allowed to violate anything in the Torah except for Avodah Zarah, Gilarai, Shri Chazdamim. So why is Nehemia turning him down? He's saying, whoa, I'm not a coin, I can't go in, or even though I am a coin, but I'm not doing the Avodah, he should listen to him, he should follow his advice. Why would you listen to the Navi Shaker and go into the, to the Hecha? But he's not telling him he's a Navi Shaker. But saying, he knows it. I know, but what's the argument? That doesn't give him permission to go Correct. To I hear you, I hear you. But what's the argument? What's his argument? Well, his, no, he says, I, I'm not going to the Kachay Kedashim. Why not? What, why not? You see, you have to. You want to listen to the Navi Shaker? Well, first of all, do we, Rashi learns he knew he was a Navi Shaker. He was an established Navi Shek. Okay. The Malbim learns that it was unclear that he, he, he had not, that's the whole, in Pasuk Yud, the Malbim says that Nehemiah had always been wondering as to the authenticity of this Navi. He had no, he had not really investigated whether this Navi was true or not. But my question is, is uh, it sounds like Nehemiah just pushing him off, but to say I can't go in because I'm not a Kayin, that's not a reason not to go in. But he says the Amr Haish Kamani Yivrach is I'm a strong Fine. man. Fine, that's I'm the first. Worry about getting killed by these characters. That's the first argument. This, what's the second argument? Second argument is, is I can't go in. I'm going to be Chayiv Misa. No, you're not. You have to save your life. You have to. You have to do it. So the Metsudas David says something uh, very interesting. You should remember this. He says if Shemaya was just giving him advice, then that's good advice. You have to save your skin and go into the Kodesh Hashem. But he wasn't giving advice. He was saying Nevuah from Hashem. Nehemiah said, if God is speaking to me miraculously, then why would God miraculously speak to me and say, oh, the only way to save yourself is by doing an Avera. 
once God is telling me what to do, God should say, you know, go uh, say some kind of, uh, drink this formula and disappear or something. And then, there are many ways for God to save me. So Nehemi says, if this guy is really a Navi, why in the world would God tell me to violate Navira? If he's telling, if he says, look, my dear friend, I have some sage advice for you, that is sage advice. But if you're saying it comes from God, why would God give? That's a very nice pshat to the He says, Kiyamar, Asher Hanavua, ah, he said, is in Pasuk, that's what the Mitzvah's David says in Pasuk Yud Beis. Let's read Pasuk Yud Beis. Va'akira, and I recognized him. I recognized. V'hine lo'yalei kim shlacha, God did not send him. Ki Hanavua diber alai, he's speaking to me with prophecy. V'toivia v'sanvalat zchara, I figured out that Tavia and Samalat had hired him. Ah. In other words, how did I recognize that God didn't send him? Because he's feigning prophecy, right? Look in the Mitzvah's David Kiyamar. He's saying, Asher Nevuah Dibar Alei Lo Lechas Alecha V'hinei Harbei Relech Ratzolofanov God has many avenues. Madua Im Ken Yitzav Laver Mitzvah Soi Ki Im Amroi Midatai If he would have said on his own Hayyamakim Lam Mibnei Pikuach Nefesh Hutter Adavar then Nehemiah could, could have uh, rationalized reasonably that I'm allowed to do this. That, to me, that's very interesting. If he's a real Navi, what's the halach if a Navi tells you to violate something in the Torah temporarily? There's you listen, door, right? right? Like Eliyahu Bahara Carmel. If a Navi tells you, right, the Chachamim, Yesh Kar Chacham Laka Domina Torah B'Sheva Al Tase, but even B'Kuma Ase as a temporary measure, they can. But he said he knew he was a Navi Shekhar. So, right. Rashi learns he knew him as a, as a Navi Shekhar. However, according to the Mabam, he's testing him out. He say that he's not a Navi Shekhar. I mean, Pasuk Yivgumu says he was a hired uh, a gunslinger. But, had, but Nehemiah didn't know that. So here you have a guy who very well... Right? If you know someone is a Navi and he tells you to go into the Beis HaMikdash, for what do you purpose? do? For what purpose? God told me to tell you to go into the Beis HaMikdash. For what purpose were you supposed to go into the Beis HaMikdash? No, because um, he said you would hide there behind the closed doors from the people who wanted to kill him. Right? Remember? Right. That, that he said that um, people are after you to kill you, so we have to go behind the closed doors. Right? But what would the halacha be if a Navi came to you and said, God told me to tell you to go into the Beis HaMikdash? You go. You go. But that's an established Navi. Now, what about someone who's not an established Navi? Does that prove he's a Navi Sheker? So the Mitzvah's David learns, well, yeah, because why would God... God has so many... Ways, right. right. Although, but maybe, I mean, uh, to, you know, I would say maybe this is the way that God selected. Listen to the Rabag. Says Rabag, no, Nehemi was very smart. Because my life is in danger. But you, Navi, why do you have to speak to me over there? Why do you have to go in there? You want to tell me what to do? You speak to me here, and then I'll go hide there. You don't need to hide. Your life's not in danger. What are you going in there for? Ah, oh, you messed up. You don't need to go in there. That That's shows your Navi Shekhar. That's what means. He's right. it out from what he said there. Right. There's no reason if you have to come into the hall if I'm the one that needs the protection. Right. Says the uh, Rabag. He says, "Bavur she'ira midivarai zoy sanavu ve'esek kedvav li'kam tzarehu let's go talk to Hashem v'chatal to Hashem." If you actually, if you look in, um, in other words, why, right? Why would why would Shemaya, the Navi, the false Navi, have to go in there? The, from there, he surmised that he's not a true Navi. So, yeah, uh, telling him that he has to come in to talk to him. 
he figured out there was no that he's not uh, Navi Hashem because no reason for him to be there. If it's right. my protection, what's it? He has no no reason to be in a hall. Right. So why? Oh, so I figured out. Why did you telling me this? Leman Sacher who? Ah, you were hired. Leman Ira, so that I should be afraid. The Esa came and go in the Chatasi, and then I'll sin because all the. Because you will promote the fact, and you will promulgate the fact, you put on the front yeah, cover, the, the Godol Hadar did Navera went into the Heichal, and it would be embarrassing for me, and my reputation would have been ruined. Lahem Shemra, that would have caused my reputation to be bad. Lamani Kharfuni, so that you should shame me. So therefore, Nechemia says, no, 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 I ain't going for this. And therefore, he turns to God, he says, God, Zachra Lekai, please remember God. Le Taivia, Taivia. Who is Sanvalat? Sanvalat, who hired Shmaya, Kamasa of Ela? They did these things. What about the Geshem the Arvi? He, he's not culpable now. They left him out. What about Geshem? Yeah, him too. Why is he not mentioned? Well, there's also. Uh, the mainstream media never criticizes the Arvi. The <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. <laughs> but who else is missing? Who else is missing? Uh, what about the Navi, the false prophet? He's not mentioned. Yeah. So yeah. he says, And also for the prophetesses, no, no Adaya. Who is this prophetess? We didn't have any prophetesses. And the other prophets, who are trying to make me scared. Now who is this no Adaya? Rashi learns, um, he, these are other prophets who were hired. So ask Ibn Ezra what happened to the main one. What happened to, what happened to Shmaya? So Ibn Ezra says, most Mepharshim agree that Shmaya is Noadaya. Why is he called Noadaya? Because he introduced his argument with what? Right, let's go. Vayomer, Nivoid. Nivoid, right? Let us, let us meet. So therefore we nickname him the, the name Noadaya. And once we give him this female name, we call him a prophetess. Other Mepharshim learn, no. That Ibn Ezra says like this. Ibn Ezra says... That Shemaya goes without saying. I mean, the fact that it says Vegam Noyadia, that implies certainly Shemaya and also these other guys. And therefore, God, please re, please remember their evil actions and punish each one of them in the appropriate way. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.